I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't care. Like after after I went through that breakup, everything else after that it just becomes constant. I don't even cry about niggas no more. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to the studio, bitch. I'm gonna make money off this. I, uh, I am. Yeah. I am. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? What's up, y'all? It's your girl Kiki back with another episode of One on One with Kicking It with Key. How you feeling today? I feel good. You feeling good? Yeah. I feel Listen, good. Hey. for those of you that do not know, I have the rapper, the songwriter, the artist, the chef, the everything, <laughs> the everything in the world. You call it, she does it. Miss Tierra Trini. Hey guys. Listen, I am so happy to finally have you in the building. I'm happy to be here. Listen, I'm happy that you're here. How are you feeling today? I feel good. I you feel, feel real good. good. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Cause you got a lot of rest. You got a lot of rest <laughs> before you got here. So I hope you're feeling good. I got a little hangover, but I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yes, I'm good. yes. So listen, as I mentioned, you are a woman about your business. Mm -hmm. You have your hands here. There and everywhere, everywhere. you're doing a wonderful job at it. Thank you. But what you are most known for is for being a rapper. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. How did you get into music? How did you know that you were going to be a rapper? How did that all start? So I did not know I wanted to be a rapper. I did not want to be a rapper. Didn't want to do it. I have a cousin, Pyramids, uh, which is also one of my producers. He was just so adamant about me being a rapper. He just be like, you know, you are a rapper. And I'm like, you are fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I don't want to do it. Because the industry is just so weird to me. And um, it's just a lot of weird stuff. But I've always been into music. I've mm -hmm. always, um, my, my mom, I always tell people my mom used to drive around. Uh, Mr. Bishy Mirage with these big, big CD books. And these yes. CD books, that's when they used to have like the credits, the lyrics. That's how I was learning songs. Like, so I, I've always loved music, music, but um, actually getting into music really came about like four years ago. And really? ever since. Oh my gosh, you would think no. that this was something that you grew up wanting to do. So, what did you grow up wanting to do? Because now I'm sure everyone is shocked now because I am. <laughs> I wanted to be a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be an orthodontist. Um, I went through this weird phase. I like. I wanted to be a stripper. I don't know why. <laughs> I think we all have. Uh, yeah, and then I saw Players Club, and I was like, no, never mind. Uh, I don't want to do it. I don't. I'm not. I, if, I have, I have, if I have to do Junior's bachelor party, I'm not going. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So it was, <laughs> but it wasn't like I didn't want to take my clothes off. I just wanted to dance. Like yes. I, I just came to dance for y'all. Like that's, that's. So you wanted to be a bottle girl. I would definitely have. I would have been a bottle girl. Yeah. You know, we can still do that. I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it, but um, bottle girls definitely get all my love and support. I, I, I can't do it. Okay, so listen, I know you wanted to be an orthodontist, but you have beautiful teeth, by Thank the way. Thank you. Like, the pearly white <laughs> is giving. Look at her smiling for the girl. <laughs> I love it. They are beautiful. Now, how did you get into becoming an author? I know that you have the Big Kid book. Mm -hmm. I know you have the Material Girl Planner. How did you get that idea? What was the inspiration? Um, I just always been a writer. Uh, I come from a family of teachers. Mm -hmm. Always... They always had me doing something, reading something. Yeah. Uh, I used to read the dictionary. So I've always been a geek. I've always been like the a nerd dictionary for fun. Uh -huh. Like, I just read it. Like, yes. I don't know. Like, did, did you know this word meant this? Like, girl, you shut your ass up. I don't care. Yeah, no one cares about that. No, no one cares about it. Like, no one cares about our bark and that it's the first, you know, whatever. Like, no one cares. But um, I just always. I just always been into writing and, and yeah. reading and stuff like that. It's, it's my strong area. Math is not really one of those things. So Don't do that. I'm going to get offended. You like math? I love math. I have a degree in math. Oh, that's... Um but you know what? Math is so definite and absolute. It's something that we all need. Like I the price of I eggs is like, going up, the price of gas. But I feel like that as a math person, it's something you would say. Like, why would you say definite, absolute? Those are math <laughs> terms. Why would you do that? It's like an absolute number. Why would you do that? Like because two plus two is always going to be four. No it, matter it is. what time, what place, what we doing. If we mad, sad, happy, that's what I like about Absolutely it. It is no. what it is. Numbers are universal. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But I don't know. But me being an author, that's how it, that's how it came about. I just always mm -hmm. like to do it. Um, when I was like 18, I started my own blog, A Cup of Tea. Wow. And um, honestly, it was just me being melodramatic like mm -hmm. I said I'm a very dramatic person I grew up watching Moesha I saw myself in Moesha that was me so um 
my blog was like my diary. Yes. And then out of nowhere, like it just grew a bunch of subscribers. Um, and that's how I came up with calling them necessities. So it was uh I call my fans necessities. I hate the word fan. It sounds so insincere and stupid. Yes. I don't like fans. And that's how I came about. And then I wrote my first book when I was like 18. What? Yeah. And what was, was the name of the book? What's what's the book about? Oh, that book was called The Furthest Thing from Perfect. Um at 18 years old? Yeah, it was a realistic fiction book. And I think the biggest mistake I made was putting myself on the cover of it. Because it's a realistic fiction. So it's it's a mixture of some things in the book is true. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of it that's not. And I was just making a story. And what ended up happening was a lot of the things that are in the book um, are misinterpreted. And it's just like they took it. They ran with it. So there's some things in the book that people just feel like, oh, I know that this is true. Like this happened to this bitch. And I'm like, girl, I totally made that shit up. Yeah. Like, some of it is real now. But. But, um, yeah, ever since then, I just kept going. Yeah. Um, I'm, like, 10 books in now. Yeah, I got, like, two about to come out this year. Oh, my god. And then gosh. two are from uh, my clients. So, I actually help people publish books. So, I have my own publishing company. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me take the wig off because you are blowing my mind here. You have your own publishing company. Yeah. So, I help regular people um, publish their books because I feel like, it's intimidating when you think about the process of publishing a book. You think you better have all this crazy money, and you don't. You don't yeah. have to. You just have to properly plan. That's why I come in, and you know, you give me your, man, your manuscript. I put it all together. I get it all done, and I hand it back to you. You really just give me your. It's like trusting me to babysit your child, and knowing when you come back, my child gonna be all it's right. It's gonna be good. It's gonna you be good. know what? I have a few things I need you to write down mm -hmm. for me. Just call me. I will. I will. <laughs> Listen, we locked in now. We got each other number. I'm going to get you a new phone. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to get you the iPhone That's 15. Gone. I'm going to get you the iPhone 15. I'm going to get you the iPhone 15 yeah. when it come out. Give me it. Give but, me it. you know, I don't think I'm going to be it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah. We'll talk about it. So, listen, rapper author, mm -hmm. writer, publisher. Mm -hmm. Tell me about these cooking skills because I know you be, you know, cooking I it up. You got the blog going on. Cooking. I love cooking. I started cooking actually, so I don't come from a line of cooks. Okay. So, you know, like everybody got like, oh, my grandma uh, taught me how to do this. My grandma didn't teach me shit. Okay. <laughs> and God rest, oh my God, God rest her. So, um, she was not cooking grandma. Yeah. Um, very material girl. Okay. She'll tell you, uh, my granny, yeah. <laughs> he was a truck driver, and you do the information as you as you as want. You as you said, when he was on the motherfucking road, let the hoes cook for him. When he come home, he better say meow. <laughs> You better be full when you get here. <laughs> when you get here. I'm not cooking for you. Yeah. So I learned how to cook in college. I had a boyfriend. I've always had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm such a, a relationship girl. And I was like, shit. He not finna be going to fam. The bitches ain't finna be cooking for him. Cooking for him. I'm finna cook for him. I'm finna learn, girl. And to this day, that was what that was my that was my first like real boyfriend. And that's how I knew that nigga loved me. Cause wow. ooh, that food was so disgusting. I wanna love on you too. Can you make me some? Absolutely. But is the food still disgusting or is it good now? No, no, it no, be no. looking good. No, the food video. is great. My food is great. I mean, it was good then, but I just like I, I really like you elevate. How you feel about onions? Yes. Yeah, that's I what it is. Onions now. I love oh, no, my baby. little I name put, is onion. I put that shit on everything. Put it on everything. everything. Oh <laughs> yes, I can't wait. So the material girl planner. If I open up this planner, what am I gonna see in the material girl planner? Because I feel like I'm a little bit of a material girl, but uh -huh. I like the plan as well. What can I look for in this? So, book? in the Material Girl Planner, how I created my planners is because I love, I love, like I said, I love writing. I love yes. like stationery and stuff like that. I can never go in the store and find planners that like speak to me, that make me feel like bitch buy me. Yeah. Right? So, when I created the Material Girl Planner, when you open it up, it's it's like a regular planner except it has um. A part in there is like, bitch better, bitch better have my money. It's the quotes for me. Yes, bitch better have my money. Well, you know when you lend people your money, the money, and you never get it back. You never get it back. Or they feeds you. And it's like, this is not even the same amount that I gave you. Like, yes. don't even worry about it. You got to pay me 15 years. Like, visit there. You just keep it. You know? And then it's like this date night section in there. You keep track of how many times you've been going out with your boyfriends. Yes. With an S. Plural. Yeah, with an S. Right. And um, there's a, like a kid section in there, like how much you done spent on them, you know, on them broke ass kids. Yeah. And it's just one of those books. It's uh, travel expenses, all of those things that's not typically in a regular planner. Yes. That's what I that's what I put inside yes. that planner. And you know what I like that because all of those things make sure that we have 
our lives in order because yeah. that's what composes of our lives. Mm -hmm. We have our intimate relationships, right. relationship with our kids, where we're spending money, where we're spending our time. And if we realize that we spend a little bit more time than here, than there, than right. there, it allows you to visibly see those things mm -hmm. when you write it down. They so, even got a I love that. for your hanging nails. Like, it's like, it's like I don't I wanna keep track of that. I don't spend I don't spend No, I feel like we need to see it. You know how like when you when dogs do something wrong and you gotta like put their them, nose in it? Yes, that's what you gotta see it. You gotta see it. You gotta say Bitch, did you really Tiana, need that four hundred dollar wig? Did you really need that? Did you really need it? And I tell myself, yes, I needed it. So, yes, yes, we needed that because we didn't have it. I didn't. It said buy me, like you said. Like we didn't see a plan. It said buy me. Now buy the wig is saying buy the me. wig. Yes, <laughs> correct. So listen, let's get back into the rap side because listen, the accomplishments, the milestones. When I say <laughs> off the charts, these are the things that people wish for when they first get on the mic, when they first book a studio session, when mm -hmm. they first get a beat. We're talking about. 99 Jam Super Cindy in the cypher. <laughs> you surrounded it around a bunch of men mm -hmm. spitting your lyrics with confidence, with poise. How does that feel to be called on and actually be in that moment? It was great because I had just moved to Orlando and I remember uh, Super Super called me and she asked me about the cypher. She was like, no, I had this really great opportunity. If you want to do it, I'm like, girl, what the fuck you mean? If? <laughs> like, what you mean do I want to do it? Super Cindy called me for anything, I try to make sure I'm there unless I absolutely just cannot because she's such a genuine person yes. from day one. Like, since I met her, even before I met her, like, she just always makes sure my name is in places or I'm in rooms that I'm supposed to be in. So I love Super. I love you, Super. Love you, Super. That was not a pay ad. <laughs> that was not pay. That's real. <laughs> but, Come um, on. yeah, and so I ended up coming home to do the cypher and I was the only girl. So only I get a kick woman. out of always being the only girl. Yes. I, I was a kick because I'm like, okay, now I got to really fucking do these niggas in. Represent. And I'm like, I'm not going to talk about pussy. I'm not going to do that because that's yes. what y'all expecting. So they actually didn't hear my verse until the day of the cypher. So when they when I started doing my verse, they was just like, oh, shit. What do mean? on. But, but I'm like, they ain't see the three thousand in the front seat what? of that car. That, in, in my two thousand Saturn. They ain't see it. They ain't see it. They must they have did. Know. They, they did. They know. could. I don't think they did. But they wasn't. They was. It was every guy there. I will say, like, it wasn't weird. You know how you mm -hmm. get around men, and it's, sometimes I get that creepy vibe. Everybody was so welcoming. Yes. Um, it was a very professional environment. It was a great environment. Um, it was like friendly competition. Yes. Honestly, like they. Everybody. I feel like. Uh, boosted everybody up and just forced everybody to come with their A game. It was it was a great experience though, and me being the only girl definitely um it definitely helped. Listen, I love it. I love watching you. Oh, you and I appreciate I, it. Listen, y'all don't know this, but our relationship go way 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 back. <laughs> like I don't even know how we linked up. Some kind of way we started following each other on Twitter. Right. I don't know who followed who first, but we kind of been cousins for yeah, a we cousins. while now. Yeah, we cousins. Yeah, we locked in. Yeah, we definitely cousins. We locked in with it. But watching you accomplish these things, it's like. It's very inspiring. Oh. It's very heartwarming. And it it doesn't feel like it's me, but it's just like, oh my God, like yeah. I love this. Yeah. Like a young black woman doing what she loves. So let me tell you, <laughs> when I saw you being featured on rap <laughs> shit by Issa Rae. Oh my God. What everybody is tweeting about. Yeah. And you was like, you kept on saying, I got a surprise for y'all. I got a surprise for y'all. And when you let us, I was like, I could cry because it's like, oh my God. You in this and you're doing it yeah. and you're handling it. So please talk to us about that experience. How did that opportunity even come? How did it happen? So that experience actually, um, what ended up happening was I actually auditioned for those roles. I auditioned for both wow. Leah and Shauna. I had no knowledge of that show or what it was about to be about. And I got like a random email and they're like, hey, we think you would be good for this, um, whatever, whatever. And um, I think you should try out. So I originally tried out for Shauna at first. And when I watched the show, it makes sense because Shauna is more the more conscious one. She more uh she raps more like that. So I'm like, okay, that's probably what they saw in me. Then I guess when they heard me talking, like how I am, uh how I talk from Miami, they was like, No, 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 no. We need we need Mia. Yeah. So I auditioned for Mia and I actually got a second call back, which was like kind of unheard of for a first yes. audition. So it was great. Um I did it and I remember this was still like pandemic time. So uh we was on this Zoom call with Issa Ray. Um I think Issa Ray was on there. I'm not sure if Sarita Singleton was on there or not. And the cast, I believe the casting director, but um 
Cast Narek that was actually one of the ones who casted for White Men Can't Jump. And I watched that movie all the time. As a with, kid, we yeah, all know that with movie. My, with my uncle, like, that's our thing. So, um, I did it. And I just feel like it was one of those things where I'm glad that they reached out to me because it was never a thought. It was never a, me being an actress. It was never a thought. And I always uh, say that Issa or whoever was a part of that production really sparked something in me that I didn't know. And so it was like great. And I remember writing them back and um, asking them like, you know, hey, because I, I didn't hear nothing back from them. So I'm like, shit, I didn't get it. Yeah. Like, what's up? So I wrote them back. I sent them like a cute little uh, thank you note. Like, thank you for even considering me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how y'all found me though? And the lady wrote, <laughs> I'm like, where the fuck y'all found me at? And the lady like, oh, well, actually, you know, well, Issa's a fan. I'm like, girl, fuck y'all. I don't care about what? nobody. I'm like, Issa, right, listen to my music. I don't care about nobody else. Oh, my God. I didn't even care. I ain't That's get the road. That's two, two, that, that was it. I was like, okay, Issa Ray know me, bitch. And then when I saw Chameleon got the role, I was so proud and so happy yes. for Chameleon. So what you say, you seeing me is, what, is, is how I look when I see for Chameleon because I watched Twerk For Me like come out and I watched that song do numbers. And I watched what the song did for us, what it did for the culture, and how they gave us such a hard time trying to get that sample clear. And they, yes. it, it never got clear. And it was getting taken down from YouTube. And it was such a battle for for her yes. and so when I seen that happen for her it was such a breakthrough moment and I was just like bitch you on your way like yeah. you are there like yeah. and I, I was so happy for her because it's like what God has for you nobody can stop it nobody can take it Mm. And rap shit, they had called me. So when they finally they reached out, I've been trying to get Fool Me once on like on TV for a long time. And they was like, girl, yeah, that sound cool and all, but we want the other shit. <laughs> we, want, we want the other shit. And GNO is actually my least favorite song. It, why is it always like that? I don't know. It's my that one was my least favorite song. They hit me up in spring, um, spring of 2000. We in 23. Mm -hmm. so, spring 22. Spring yes. 22. They um they hit me up and they was like, hey. Here's the numbers. Um, we need this song. If you go this quote, this is what we gonna send. Um, if you ain't, what? let me know. And I'm like, okay, we gonna do this. And at that time, it was you know whatever. So when I kept saying it was a surprise, it was a surprise because I didn't know that they actually used the song because they never they never confirmed. Yeah. With the um the distribution uh company, my publishing and stuff. So I'm like. Yeah, like are they one gonna my, use one it? of my one of my supporters tech they tweet and they like we on rap shit. I said, what you mean? And that I had just lost my grandma. I remember and it that. was episode seven. It was my grandma's favorite number. And um Oh my god. Yeah, and I remember uh I'm like, you you sure? And they like, no, we we own that. We we know our songs. And they they are that's their song, bitch. They wrote it. They like that's yes. my song. So I remember listening, I watched the episode full. I ain't wanna miss nothing. And I remember the first time I heard, bitch, be ready in an hour. Oh, what I lost it. What was that? Did I you start crying? It. I lost it. Because that's actually my sister on the skit. So I wrote that skit in the studio. And I called my sister like, I need you to do this right now. Um, and if you watch Fumi One's video, that's the song that's at the end of the video. I, I, oh, I lost it. I boo, I boo who cried. And I was like, dang. You know, my grandma not here. She's such a shit talker. And I just could imagine, like, she was going to be calling it. everybody, like, oh, T.R.O. on HBO. I wonder how much they pay her. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first thing she asked me. Because that's her. Like, my grandma's a Leo the woman. Money. They yes. buy their money. Yeah. She like, I wonder how much they pay her. Um, You going to pay the light bill? She was saying that. <laughs> she was saying that. She it. was already she, saying she it. She was saying that. My brother woke up the next morning, like, you know, I ain't going to lie. That's crazy. I don't even feel like going to work. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, who was on HBO? Me or you? Listen. All of us felt that way that night. Oh, I remember yeah. that night like it was yesterday. It felt so good. Like it was like Twitter was in shambles. Oh, I loved it. I, I loved every moment of it. It felt I'm so, like, it this felt is so my good. cousin. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, cousin. This is my cousin. She's famous. Yeah. She's on rap <laughs> shit. I already told you, like, once I heard you on the radio, I like, listen, I am a fan of this girl and she doesn't even know. I'm chilling with my family and we just listening to the radio, which we rarely listen to the radio, right. but we listen. And I'm like, you got a fan. I said, I said everybody, shut, shut up. Everybody be quiet. They like, what? They thought something happened. I said, turn that up. Uh, turn that's my that cousin. Up. Turn that up. I say, that is my cousin. That's like, my cousin. I went crazy. Oh and my everybody God. just, they like, you like, everybody is singing it word for word. Oh, and my like, God. As soon as I said, everybody be quiet. Tierra, Trenice is on. Everybody, it was like a choir rehearsal. Oh, my God. You got to figure oh it out. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. Listen. I love it.
I Listen, love it. <laughs> you are making waves. I mean, and by waves, I mean two million streams on Apple music yeah so it's not just talk you got no. two million, two million how does that feel you got people that's been rappers for i don't know how long it feel great honestly it do it feel great but it come with a lot though because like i said all the time um i don't have no problems with none of the girls like all the girls like just about every girl that raps from miami to broadway like if, if we know each other i don't have a problem with them like we support each other um I support their music. If I could go to the show, I make yes. it. If I can't, I let them know when I can't. It was the niggas. Like, I got the heat from the niggas. Like, the niggas was like, the men was like, bitch, yeah. I was doing this for 15 years. The yeah. nerve for you to wake up one day and get your heart broke and write a motherfucking song and then boom. Yeah. I, I God's getting, favorite. I was getting, I was God's, I, I, I'm like, I ain't choose this. Yeah. I wanted to be a motherfucking teacher in a house with my husband, a white picket fence. You know, maybe right. a dog or some a goldfish. But, it was niggas. It was niggas. And I made, and I think the, 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 my favorite part about it all is I made them respect me. Yeah. I made them respect me. They didn't, they didn't have a choice at the end. Cause it was like, I wasn't talking about what everybody else was talking about. And if that's what you want to, you know, if that's what you want to talk about, that's cool. Cause I listen to all the music. Correct. But I was like, I got to make y'all respect me. Like when yes. I go in the studio, I don't play with them. I don't smoke their weed. I don't drink their liquor. I'm here to work. I'm here to work. I'm gonna take a shot though. I'm, I am gonna. I'm gonna take a shot. But um, I, I'm. I, I pride myself on that. I don't, yeah. I don't. I don't go and play. I don't play no games with them. And that's good because as a woman, being beautiful, a beautiful black Thank woman, you. an intelligent black woman, mm -hmm. it can be difficult because a man they're going to want to offer you something yeah. for something. So I think it's good to keep that boundary Absolutely. and keep that level of respect Absolutely. for yourself and to let them know what's mm -hmm. going on. Because if not, it, it leaves a bad reputation and it's a bad thing for other women. So I love what you're doing. I love it. Y'all going to respect it and you're not checking it. Yeah. You can't check it. No. You can just watch. Absolutely. Listen and learn. Because it's such a boys club. Like anytime women ask me for features, I try to make it happen. I see, seen you on the Shibuya. <laughs> you was with Chrissy Celeste. Yes. Also so my girl, my I cousin. Chris. I love Christy. Christy is such a team player. Um, even how that whole thing came about. Uh, I just was like, shit, the girls from Memphis doing it. Like, let's do it. Let's go. Y'all should have called me, though. <laughs> we gonna call so we need to redo another we, one. We need to do another one. Yeah. We need to do another one. We're going to do, 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 do Water Cat. We're going to do Water do Cat. Do something. Something. <laughs> yes, something. Christy's such a, such a team player. Um, such a sweet girl. And I, I love Christy. I tell people all the time, like, I love Christy. Yes. She got this, just this no nonsense kind of thing like you know like i'm yes. just kind of like more laid back chrissy just like on go all the time like I, I i i i love chrissy meek was on there too that's yes. my that's my sister i love meek v was on there v been v been doing music for a while and v is like another like another heavy hitter so i was like yes. i just gotta get all my like all my favorites Together and y'all did what was supposed to be done because I was Shabuya, <laughs> Shabuya. Sh sh oh, I was really in there. So talk to me about this new single, Potential. Oh my God, Potential. <sighs> so What's poten the Potential okay, is Potential is produced by Pyramids, my cousin. Um, it's one shout of the out songs. To shout out to my cousin. Uh, it's one of the songs that's actually on my album, and Potential just came about. I was like I said, these niggas. <laughs> Niggas, man. You gotta love them though. You can't. You gotta. You got to. But I, I, I'm trying not to because they not. They not good. But they got. They make great content. So I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't care. Like after after I went through that breakup, everything else after that it just becomes content. I don't even cry about niggas no more. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to the studio, bitch. I'm gonna make money off this. I, I, I am. Yeah. I am. Why, Why not? not? Why not? Why not? Potential. Exactly. So I don't, they, potential don't even know potential about him. <laughs> <laughs> he don't even know potential and about him. He still him. don't need to know because he might try to get some of his royalties. Try and we not having that. They ain't getting shit from me. They know that. <laughs> you owe them some alimony for that song, okay? <laughs> Listen, I know we talked about Camellia and some of the things that she went through, some of the challenges, but what advice or challenges did you go through and how did you overcome those things to you know give those inspiration out there that is trying to meet some of these accolades that you have um business first like music is music is fun music is is great but handle your business first and when i say handle your business first like just uh make sure everything is in order when i was uh, first, when I first came out, I was still in college. I was I graduated from FIU in 2020, and I had already taken out most of my English courses. So I was done, and I ended up taking two music classes, mm -hmm. a music business uh, class and a concert touring because I had electives open. I could just take them. Yeah. 
changed my life tremendously. Um, to the point where when Fumi once was like popping and shit, it was people coming out and reaching. So like I see little jokes and shit, like, you know, I'm not signed. It's not that I couldn't get signed, it's that I went going for it. It was a lot of people came my way and the numbers wasn't, it wasn't no life changing numbers, or it was like the shit that they was talking about. I'm like, you can't do that. That's not how this go. Cause I, I read the book. You had the education. I've always been a reader. Um, so like that's what I would say, like read, like. Read up on your whatever craft you are in. Always read up on it. It's always somebody who's be who's better than you, who's an expert at it. Take their advice. Um, network, make build relationships with everybody. Um, yes. When it comes time to ask for features, half the time a lot of people don't pay for features because we have such a, a strong relationship that it's like a back and forth kind of thing. I'm gonna yeah. need you again later, anyways. You know. Right. So that's that's those are like my top two like. I would say advice, but like up and coming, uh, and don't take it to the heart. Like, yeah. just don't. Everybody ain't gonna like your music. Yes. Everybody not gonna Everybody like it. Everybody ain't gonna like it. And it's and cool. It's okay with this. It's, it's, it's all right. Really is. <laughs> Listen, um, have you ever thought of like being a AR, a manager? I mean, you know the ins and the outs of music. Mm -hmm. You know the the paperwork that gotta be done, you know all of that. Have you ever thought of it? No, but uh I do I I help. Them, I help upcoming female artists all the time. Yeah. Like they take. So you're I, basically a manager. I, yeah. Girl, you do it all. I, I Leave me alone. my number. I'm like, look. Don't let them put you on a motherfucking flyer for nothing less than this. Yeah. I'm telling you, they got it. Yes. Don't let them put you on a fucking flyer for no hookah. We, yeah. could, we can go to hookah by ourselves. Like I tell them that all the time. Um, they ask me all the time how to upload music. I show them everything because nobody was there to show me that. Nobody was there helping me that. And I don't believe in oh, I had to do it by myself. So no, I feel like if you want to come into this, it, it needs to be as easy as possible when you come. It need to be smooth sailing. So if, if, if I had to go through a little speed bump, so for you, you to have, have a... I don't care. I don't mind. I girl, love I text that. all the time, girl. Call I me. Love that. Ask me any question you want. Listen, you need to open up a store called <laughs> I Do It All because you really do it all. What can we expect for you in 2023? More music, uh, more visuals. Um, my album is coming she out this year. visuals. But it's music videos. And music videos. Okay. Yes. Music, music videos. <laughs> uh, so I turned for me. I took for me once from a song to a book. And this year it actually, um, I'm right now I'm in training because um, it's being turned into a short film. Oh my God. So a director came to me and was like, I think it'll be a good idea <gasps> if uh, this song this song has its own kind of story by itself. Mm -hmm. And let's do it. And I'm like, shit. Oh, well. I, right. I made my first. Uh, my when well, I'm my first with my second like ten bands for real for real off the book like I sold that book I'm like you know nigga gonna have me crying bitch I'm gonna cry to the bank oh I'm gonna cry gosh. to the motherfucking bank so it's about to get turned into a short film and I can't wait because I'm getting my acting on and next time Issa Issa I'm gonna be ready for you I'm gonna be ready for Issa when you she come back what? when she spin that block for me I'm gonna be ready you gonna be ready <laughs> yeah listen when Issa call again y'all gonna be both sitting in the director chair listen like I love Issa whatever Issa want me to do if she want me to just bring her some tea some coffee I would do it you gonna do that I'm exactly. gonna do it with a smile on your face here you go Issa listen I love your 2023 growth if there's any acting that you need me to do any tea Absolutely. that you need me to bring you call me, <laughs> so I will be on with the, the slim gym with the slim gym. I love the slim gym. I'm gonna have your Canada dry, your slim gym. I'm gonna have everything that you need. I love it. Listen, no, I love it. <laughs> I just learned so much about you. I thought I did my research, y'all, but I did not do a good job because this woman does it all. I love it. I love, oh my I love god! It. Can you please let the people know where to follow you, where to get the book, where to listen to your music? Let the people know. So you can follow me at Tierra Trinise on Instagram. Instagram, on Twitter, mm -hmm. on Facebook, uh, if you want to be my friend. But on Facebook, if you want to be my cousin, then you can follow me. <laughs> Only my cousins are on my Facebook. That's it. So, key my cousin so she can follow me on Facebook. Correct. Um, my music is everywhere. It's on all digital streaming platforms, Apple Music Titles, Spotify, YouTube, and the website where you can actually purchase my books is thetierratrinese.com. Um, yeah, it's Tierra Trinise. It was, Tierra but it's not like I'm a diva, but I lost the uh, the, the domain. <laughs> I lost the domain, and so something happened with that, so I had to put V in front of. I'm not a diva, or nothing like that. It just the Tierra Trinise. The Tierra Trinise. But you know what? I love that name. <laughs> Cause it's T T T. That's my real name. Threat. That's my real name. All of my names start with a T. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I think my mama just knew. She just knew. She just knew. The triple yeah. threat. Yeah, Tierra Trinise is actually my real name. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I, listen, y'all. 
Go get my baby book, get the planner, <laughs> get the book for your kids. Call her if you need advisory, if you need a beat, if you need writing, authoring, publishing. Recipes. Recipes, <laughs> uh, advice. I don't know. It's just, she does it all. <laughs> Call my girl. I love her so much. Thank you so much I for spending you. time Thank with me. Thank you for having me. And kicking me. it with Key, girl. <laughs> you going to come back? I'm coming. Listen, next year, 2024, you're going to see <laughs> Kiki and Tiara Trinise. Yes. Bye. Bye, y'all. Girl! <laughs>